right, so you know the routine. Let's grab the ladders off. We'll get the wheelbarrow. We'll set it up so we can just get it going. The idea of green infrastructure is not only to offset stormwater, but it's also to offset the built environment. It does not need to be entire giant parks and we do not need to wipe out parts of the city. By installing small portions of green space within the city, we not only help out the stormwater effect, but we help out the wildlife within the city. The green roofs that we're putting along the Blue Hill Ave corridor um, between Ruggles uh, and all the way down to Mattapan is creating a pollinator pathway for local species. It helps retain stormwater along the, path the pathway as well. This is a heavy bus and car corridor, so a lot of the particulates that are in the air will also get captured and filtered out with these bus shelters. My name is Michael Chavez. I'm the co-founder and principal of an architecture firm called Social Impact Collective. And we are the uh, architecture firm and design team that, uh, earned the, that got the contract from the city of Boston to install these green roofs on the bus shelters. One of the biggest things about this whole corridor is transit access. There is no rapid transit in this, in this community that we're running this, these bus shelters through. There is buses, but there are no trains. And the uh, 28 that runs through here that goes from Mattapan all the way to Ruggles is for free. You know, it's a free ride. It allows folks to be able to get from the community down to work, to school, wherever they might be going. And so this is also part of that larger uh, master planning component of what the city of Boston is working towards when it comes to transit access. The Blue Hill App Corridor is going to have, over the next 10 years, an entire uh, revitalization. They're revamping it, providing new bus lanes, bike lanes, and a bunch of other things. And this is the, essentially the kickoff for that. So this is part of, again, a larger master plan, multi-billion dollar investment in this corridor. And this is the very beginning stages of that investment. So we're going to tip it up like this. Ten years ago, Trevor and I piloted this thing in, in Boston on eight shelters. Uh, and so we did that without these decking systems, though. That was the difference, is that this one's because it's going to be up over the wintertime, we need these decking systems to stay there to carry snow load. Last time we took them down in the fall so that there was no uh, green roofs on the shelter. So we've tested it, we piloted it. This will be the first time us putting the decking system up there, but we've done the plants and they work great. And so we designed these uh, structural decking systems to essentially carry all of those loads uh, and the, all that weight will be put on the front and the back of the shelters. These particular shelters have glass panels uh, in the center and uh, we don't want to put any weight on those glass panels. These three panels won't interfere with the original shelter construction. So it really is a true retrofit, which is what makes this project uh, really so, so unique. We can use our existing infrastructure and still create that green space, which cuts costs exponentially. We're doing 30 bus shelters this time, uh, which will be the largest installation in the country, in the United States. These things are happening across the world. Um, they've put some of these in uh, Japan, in the UK, the Netherlands, uh, Sweden. Um, but uh, my understanding is that these are actually going to be the most robust shelters uh, in the world because of these decking systems. All the other ones had plants going right on top of the, the, the bus shelters themselves, or the bus shelters were designed for green roofs. The green roofs are going to be planted with sedum, which is a succulent. Uh, it's extremely drought tolerant, shallow rooted, and able to live in a very small amount of soil. Moving forward, we are going to seed these green roofs with native plants. Native plants specific to our native pollinator species. So the idea long term for this is to create a pollinator pathway down the 28 line and hopefully throughout the entire city. You know, we have 90 that are going up along the corridor. So we have a total of 90 of these things that were built hand fabricated. So these will work to both provide the, the, the housing for the plants, but at the same time, uh, not do anything uh, with the shelters in terms of structural issues and that kind of thing. Moving up from that decking, we have a root barrier that is already put down and that will keep the roots of the plants from affecting the structural decking itself. On top of that root barrier goes this drainage mat right here. This drainage mat you see has dimples on the bottom, which creates a vapor layer and allows the water to slowly pass through should a hurricane 
move up this way and we have a whole lot of water, that water will be able to drain off. On top of this drainage layer, we have this retention fleece. This retention fleece acts like a sponge. So what it does is this will fill with water first and retain a good amount of water. So that will slow the drainage, it will hold the water up there for the plants and allow that water to evaporate into the air. We then put a thin layer of lightweight soil and then we get to these plants right here. And those sod mats are planted with five different types of sedum. And then as I mentioned before, plant these with native pollinator seeds so that we can have native plants and create that pollinator pathway we were talking about. All right, so you know the routine. Let's grab the ladders off. We'll get the wheelbarrow. We'll set it up so we can just get it going. Right now we are at One Crawford. We are down in uh, Blue Hill Lab in Dorchester. We are installing the last of the panels on this section of eight that we're working with. Uh, so we have these last panels right here. Right now the crew is just unloading. They're getting set up. They're getting all the ladders set up because we just got to gorilla these to the top and we'll be able to just start planting and just plop and drop right after that. I'm good in the corner, yep. We are working with Youth Build Boston and actually teaching these young adults the whole idea of a green roof, the importance of a green roof. So they are starting to understand how greening the community can have an impact on the neighborhoods that they live in. Having this be permanently up for the next three to five years, which we're very excited about, we're uh, able to engage with a lot of folks in the community. We're able to engage with young people, uh, with people who are looking for green jobs and uh, kind of the future of workforce development. So we're, we're really happy to use this as a tool for, for that and for really helping discuss what green infrastructure impacts are in communities that are affected the most. So I think one of the biggest uh, lessons learned on the project here uh, is that the policy work that needs to happen and kind of the agreements behind the scenes before the actual project is a big part of uh, climate resiliency. And that's something that we learned on this. From the time that uh, the initial RFP came out to the time that we did this installation, it's been about nine months. And that's just essentially put green roofs on bus shelters. The number of stakeholders and people that need to be involved in that from the city's departments and elsewhere, it's, it's a lot. And so just thinking about this as a minor pilot about public-private partnerships is very important, I think, to learn about how we can apply that then to much larger projects that will be happening over the next 25 years um, that will be involved. I think the hardest part of the work is really gonna be what happens behind the scenes. The easiest part will actually be the work itself.